I think what's strange is that we often go into church and then expect like church is going to be this like utopia and this like perfect place. And then when we find out that people are human, it's like, no, (laughs) I'm not dealing with that. My experience is that with a lot of times people don't deal with the pain that they've got and they just carry it somewhere else. And then it becomes that church's problem when really it's an unresolved hurt and an unresolved problem, which quite often is very legitimate. We my own lack of like personal boundaries. Often I was like, serve, serve, serve in church. And so you just end up feeling like burnt out all around and wanting to like close yourself off. And I think particularly it was that feeling of, yeah, I just don't want to be vulnerable with people. I don't want to be open. I don't want anyone to know anything personal about me. The difficulty if, if we never choose to walk forwards from that, which I know is the it is yeah. the harder journey to do that, to walk back into a place or back towards a community, even if it's a different one that you feel has hurt you and really let you down or it, it didn't meet expectations for some reason is if you choose not to do that again, yeah, you probably won't get hurt to that same level again, but you also can't experience the joy of being part of something like that again. Thank you so much for being a part of our growing community. It honestly is just such an honour and such a dream to see how Magnify is growing. For anyone who's new to our channel, Magnify is a network, community and platform focused on empowering ambitious women of faith to thrive in our various spheres of influence. And we know how important it is to have safe, honest, authentic conversations as women of faith. And so we want to provide a space to do that. My name is Ruth and I'm the founder and CEO of Magnify. And my name's Rachel and I'm part of Team Magnify. We'll be your hosts and we'll also be featuring guests each time. So if you like our content, don't forget to like and subscribe and most importantly, share with a friend who you think would benefit. So today's episode has been something that we've spoken about a lot as Team Magnify. Um, I guess we're asking the question, is it necessary to belong to a church as a person of faith? And I know there are so many mixed views on that and so many things we could talk about. But just to start with, Ruth, what's your experience of church? Were you brought up in church? Did you come to faith later in life? Like, how's it been for you? Um, So yeah, definitely have always been in church. And like you, I'm a pastor's kid. Um, So I think that can be like very interesting because sometimes you have a bit of a complex relationship with church, but definitely I think always seeing church as like a big part of my parents' lives. But what was great was I always saw that their life outside of church was like the same. Um, So growing up, I loved like being in youth group on Fridays, being at church on Sundays, and pretty much like every family we knew was in church. You know, grew up in a very multicultural church. But I guess when I like came to faith properly as an adult, that was like my first first time, I guess, understanding the complexities of church and finding a church for myself that wasn't necessarily just like my going there because my parents were there or because they led there. Um, So yeah, church has always been a part of my life. How about for you? Yeah, well, as you know, (laughs) I'm also the child of like, what what were the lead pastors of the church? So I've been in church my whole life and and the same church now for nearly 35 years. So to be able to see a community over such a long period of time change and grow and evolve and then also see like the good the bad the ugly the beauty like the the terrible times the amazing times and I think my relationship to that has been uh, complicated obviously at times but then I think there's been a real amazing part to that too um but yeah you know when I when I think about people being damaged by the church and then I'm going to talk about that in a little bit I I think I can see elements of that in my story sometimes, but I don't think that's the leading narrative. But yeah, that is my experience and I am still part of that same church. So I feel like a big conversation, especially over the last few years, and rightly so, has been around church hurt and dealing with church hurt. And I think... I don't know if it was the pandemic. I think I think probably before that, lots of different things have come to light. And it's not that being hurt in a church community is a new thing, yeah. but the conversation has come out and been a lot more honest. What are your kind of thoughts around that? And what are your, so maybe some of your experiences of that? Is that something you're familiar with? So I think it's very complex and we've spoken about this and I talk a lot about it with friends because I know for many people experiencing church hurt actually puts them off church entirely, whether it's that they've experienced it or they've read about it in the news. Um, And it's never something that I want to deny because that's like a reality. But I guess with church, sometimes it's that 
church is made up of people and we're all very messy, we're complicated, sometimes we don't communicate as well as we should do. So I think what's strange is that we often go into church and then expect like church is going to be this like utopia and this like perfect place. And then when we find out that people are human, it's like, no, (laughs) I'm not dealing with that here. Um, So I think, yeah, as an adult, probably like over a decade ago, definitely was something that I experienced. And it is really hard because church is not like a workplace where you have you know, I know we work at Magnify, but sometimes you can be in a workplace where you don't expect much. You're just kind of going there to like, you know, live out your passion or work on your, Mm. develop your skills and get a salary. Whereas with church, it is family and it is supposed to feel like a home and yeah, like essentially like a second home. Um, So I think when, you know, maybe trust is broken or people just do not seem as perfect as you maybe thought they would, that can be like very, very painful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think also with my experience was that in church, like in my early 20s, often, especially if you're like helping in the church or volunteering, you are putting like a lot in above and beyond. Whereas I think in a workplace, you're putting a lot in, but you know, you're getting paid for that. <laughs> so it's not just out of the goodness of your heart. Um, so I think like that can be a really painful thing when it feels like I've poured so much in And for whatever reason, maybe a misunderstanding or if it's deliberate or whatever, you feel like that you experience pain in a place where you are going for like restoration or healing or peace. Um, But I think what I've learned, I always kind of use this analogy, is that say growing up in being in education, if you experience like a teacher who maybe didn't treat you that well or didn't really know what they were doing, you wouldn't be like, oh, I'm just leaving education in its entirety now. And I think sometimes that's out of like our human pain. That's what we can do of like, oh, I experienced a situation or like another church member did this to me. So like now I'm just like cutting off like church in its entirety. So I've learned there's also a place for like maturity in our attitude to how we deal with, yeah, church hurt. It's definitely something very complicated and very painful. But I think ultimately we need to put God on the highest level that he is and put Mm. humans even in church on the level that they are, which is that they are just humans. But yeah, what's been your experience of church hurt, Um, particularly as like, yeah, in your position serving and leading Mm. in a church? Yeah. So I think like in terms of my personal experience, it's like, how long have you got? (laughs) Because being part of the same community for that amount of time I, I can't you know I'm not, I, there's not even many things that stand out which is great I feel quite privileged in that way but there have been many times where I've felt disappointed let down and because the church is not a business really it is a family it's a community and those people are only really a community for the most part because it they're all centered around Christ like there's no other kind of club or anything else where people are going to come together that are so like different and so like even just having different backgrounds different worldviews essentially that join together around the same thing so I think in the middle of that there is automatic like cue for chaos or there can be (laughs) in the midst of like us expecting unity and all of those amazing things and so personally I think I've had different experiences of that and I think for the most part managed to heal from them with time or healing from them I guess sometimes my experience though as a leader and somebody who's serving in the church as well is that church hurt is it's it's huge for people and especially when people have joined the community that I'm a part of and they've been really open and upfront that the the damaged goods (laughs) from a church it's good to know that because how I would understand their responses to things and how I would maybe even interact with them would be different because I know that's a huge thing and it's not to just have an excuse not to deal with it or just to run to the next community or just run away altogether as you were saying but to be realistic about how much of an impact that has like if you have fractures in your actual family relationships it's really painful and you you can't just run and find another family (laughs) that's a bit different but you you are able to go and join another I know we're a global church but to join a local church and to find healing and so my experience is that with a lot of times people don't deal with the pain that they've got and they just carry it somewhere else 
And then it becomes that church's problem when really it's an a unresolved hurt and an unresolved problem, which quite often is very legitimate as well. Just to say, you know, we're not obviously trying to like yes. gaslight people around this at mm-hmm. all. Like it's a really serious conversation, but there has to be some kind of process of healing, I think, if you want to be part of a church community again. I guess actually you've made a really good point about how do we deal with that. And I think like looking back on my experience, one of the things is forgiveness is so important because like the Bible commands us to forgive. And as you say, if you don't forgive in your heart, it doesn't matter what, you know, anyone else who is involved, how they review or react to the situation. If you don't deal with that in your heart, you will just like carry that to the next place. But I think with me, one of the things where God is very gracious and very patient was that you know, this was over 10 years ago, the way it made me feel was like, I don't really want to like get involved in a church in the future. Not that I didn't want to go to church, but more that I don't want to ever put myself in a position where I'm so vulnerable and I'm so open. Because we all know, even in our friendships, in our, you know, marriages, when you're vulnerable, that gives the opportunity for hurt to occur, like if you have been open. Um, So I think for me, it's been a real like healing journey of that, you know, no matter what I experienced, God actually commands us and calls us to fellowship with other believers. Um, But I definitely think for a few years, I found it really difficult to want to get involved and particularly like serve again. I was like, no, I'm just going to go. I don't want anyone to know my business. I don't want to know anybody else's business. I'm just going to sit quietly and I'm going to leave. Um, And I think for me, one of like the complicated factors has been you know, I'm 34 now and I started back when I was 19. So in many respects, although it's like a job, which I never really think of it as now, for the majority of time, I was like volunteering in a like ministry capacity with Magnify. And so I think that it was probably my own lack of like personal boundaries. Often I was like, serve, serve, serve in church. And so you just end up feeling like burnt out all around and wanting to like close yourself off. Um, And I think particularly it was that feeling of, yeah, I just don't want to be vulnerable with people. I don't want to be open. I don't want anyone to know anything personal about me. Um, But then church becomes like a very lonely place because you're Mm. just kind of going as a consumer, not interacting with anyone, whereas church really is supposed to be family. So I think for me, what I've learned from church is like forgiveness in your own heart is so important and letting that process of like healing take place that when you go to somewhere else, you can actually be a blessing to like that church community, but also receive like love and kindness and be open to that grace Mm -hmm. from others I think just something you were saying then Ruth it is true that obviously when you've put yourself out there in in any relationship or setting and you've been vulnerable and you've got hurt it is natural to pull back Mm -hmm. it's part of our way of protecting ourselves and sometimes part of our healing I think for a season too and not to negate that the difficulty if, if we never choose to walk forwards from that which I I know it's the hard, it is yeah. the harder journey to do that, to walk back into a place or back towards a community, even if it's a different one that you feel has hurt you and really let you down or it, it didn't meet expectations for some reason, is if you choose not to do that again, yeah, you probably won't get hurt to that same <laughs> level again, just being completely honest, but you also can't experience the joy of being part of something like that again because you've always got your wall and even if you go back and you try to go somewhere else or maybe just serve a little bit or just make a few friends it's quite hard to experience the intimacy that can come with that as well which is obviously the real beauty of the church I think another thing that I've seen a bit more and I don't know if you've seen this is everything being called church hurts which is to me is a little a little bit of I a didn't worrying get to do trend. what I wanted to do in church it was church no, yeah it was. <laughs> it's a bit of a worrying trend mm-hmm. either that I didn't get what I wanted to do somebody said no to me or being legitimately challenged maybe on a thought or a lifestyle pattern which is not actually always a church thing it's more of a biblical <laughs> thing and I think that with a lot <laughs> yeah there's there's a way to do yeah. that of course and I'm not talking about toxic leadership or bad behaviors from church leadership but that now can be church hurt so it's like well that person said that to me so that's it I'm done like and I've been damaged by the church and I'm never going back and I think that's where you were speaking earlier about the maturity side of things it's like yeah sometimes those difficult conversations hurt but being willing to 
sometimes stay with those people and work through it and work through the conflict to to get some resolution as well. I think think that's the hardest thing, working through it. Because as you said, say in a family, if you have a complex situational conflict you're not just like oh I'm just going to look on the internet and find a new family (laughs) Um, whereas with church sometimes it's that we have like a very consumerist attitude and obviously it's a great thing that there are so many different types of churches different sizes churches for all kinds of different people but I think sometimes the danger in that and I was speaking from experience is that we don't often then like want to work through things it's just easier to like find something else I think one thing I would love to talk about because again chatting with like so many people is Obviously, with churches, churches are never going to employ like 500 people necessarily. So part of it is those of us who are members and committed to like the life of a church, serving is like an important thing. But I remember chatting to a few friends like once COVID hit who'd been like leaders and serving and they said like I feel so bad to say this but when COVID hit there was a sense of relief that like Mm. I'm finally getting a break because serving at church this literally feels like a second job. As someone who's on the other side of that who is a church leader how important is it for people to serve but also I guess I would love to like discuss maybe reflect on as those who do serve how can we have more how can we employ wisdom and boundaries so that we don't kind of overextend ourselves and then also call that church up? Yeah, yeah. So I think through the pandemic, a lot of people and and sometimes church teams and leaderships began to review, okay, just everything. I mean, didn't everybody review their lives? But I think there were, there were so many things that came out about prominent churches through the pandemic as well, which it caused people to go like, okay, are we overworking people? Like, have we asked too much? Is this really still about Jesus? Like quite really yeah. fundamental questions. Now, I'm not saying everybody was asking that, but I think that was a question to leaders. I think that was also a question to people who were just part of the church. Like we re- we analysed our lives, we spend too much time at work, not enough time with our family, or we're going to pursue something completely new so and put our about, heart yeah. and soul into it. Yeah. And that you've just seen the effects yeah. of that now. So I think that, that's something that began to happen and that's normal. I think in terms of if, you know, what's the importance of serving? For me, if you are a follower of Jesus, a servant, being a servant, it's a a lifestyle. Actually, it's a commitment to kind of a, a way of thinking. And so whether you're at work or whether you're with family or friends or in a church setting, it's being willing to pour yourself out in some way. And I, I do, I mean, I'm a big believer that that is not only great for the church that you're a part of to benefit from your gift and bring your highest point of contribution to the table, but also for you as the individual to, to feel a part of something. Now, how you manage your boundaries around that, how much you are asked to do and how much you agree to is another conversation altogether because I think that's what we've seen as well before the pandemic but then past the pandemic is quite often that falls on a few people who quite often doing full-time jobs like I remember you telling me like doing 20 hours, putting in 20 hard hours of graft in the week volunteering and again I think the response to that can be well I'm just going to pull back and I'm not going to do anything I think a more wise conversation to have is right if I've kind of following this role of having a servant heart I guess for me is a better way to say it and this is who I am as part of my faith this is who I am no matter where I am what could that look like in the church setting and if that's two hours or three hours or one hour and if it's at a Sunday service or a Sunday gathering or it's a completely different time in the week or I'm just serving the church in a bit of a different way knowing that that is coming from a position of who you are and your identity rather than just I'm going to do this just this because this is the done thing I think also you were saying before about like we can easily become consumers I think that's another way (laughs) to quite quickly become a consumer is to show up to a service every week or to show up to some kind of connect group every week and just take 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 and I, I even think it sometimes sounds good to people to be a consumer but I think ultimately I've seen it just make people feel more and more distant Mm -hmm. kind of from what's going on and lose the purpose for why they even join together and gather together and the wider mission that each of us have got no matter where we are and what we're doing with the rest of our lives. 
That's such a great point that you made, actually. And I've got another question is around like the shift to like church online, Mm -hmm. Um, because obviously that was a good thing with COVID. The positive was that so many people who maybe never been to church or for whatever reason couldn't physically go, church was made so much more accessible. Um, And I know I discovered like Sundays actually, you know, has the same number of hours in the day as other (laughs) days of the week. Um, But I guess since COVID has kind of, would we say COVID is finished but yeah we're in a different time that for a lot of people they've kind of just been like oh I can just keep watching church on YouTube and not necessarily need to go in um do you think it's important to physically go to a church or can we be just as connected and receive just as much by watching it online so my upfront answer is yes I think it's really important but just to give a bit of context to it I think the opportunity of digital church and gatherings online and the way that so many different people have been reached even just being able to watch something or being more open to see something online whether they're part of the church or not through the pandemic was huge and I will never discount that and I have so many stories from that even just from the church I'm a part of and the reach that has had and different things like online alpha and like people being able to access things like that who otherwise they're not going to show up at something in person I don't worry about it so much because I think fundamentally people always want and need some kind of community now that might be less often Mm. and I think for some people just their patterns and rhythms and habits changed through the pandemic so like you said oh like hey Sunday's actually a great day to rest or and so they may attend something less frequently and I suppose that actually that doesn't bother me as much as ultimately how are we being transformed and like how are we doing the thing God has asked us to do um I do think being part of a church in physically gathering as well is such a vital part of that I don't think you always realize how vital it is until you need the other people who are there or sometimes like the yeah, for me like online church it was great but it was a bit of a novelty and then after a bit I was just I was like, like I'm over this <laughs> yeah and it's still great yeah. it's still great to be able to watch like a message online or see something different but this whole thing and I've got to be careful what I say but this whole thing of like only having online church I think it it kind of works if you're someone who travels all the time or your life is not in one place because you need some type of community to belong to and I think it can really work I think generally if you're in a fixed location it, to, to never really meet with other people of faith or to not really attach to something can just become that consumer type mentality again Yeah, I totally agree with what you said, Rach. Um, So I think for me, I would also love to share what I love about being part of local church. Mm. Um, And maybe I'll actually talk about an experience that me and my husband had a few years ago when we went um, to a church in Brazil. And I just could not believe what they were doing in their local church. So the church was maybe about 300 people, one of the poorest places in Brazil. And previously the church had had like you know, a fully covered, amazing building. And then the pastor, before the church was about to celebrate their 80th anniversary, mm-hmm. he found out that in their local town, there was a family who had no money who were going to sell the virginity of their 13-year-old. And he was so horrified and so moved. And he was like, the money that we've saved for this celebration, we're going to give to the mm-hmm. local community. And that kind of started off a chain of events. So he said that he felt the Holy Spirit speak to him and say that this building, it needs to be to not just share the gospel, but actually to serve the local community. Um, So they started doing things like, um, you know, providing internships for lots of the kids from the favelas. Um, Even there's lots of widows around that place. So they would like teach them to sew so they could then sell things in the market. you know prostitution a lot of kids were taken at like 13 14 because of there was so much corruption there kids like from 1 p.m would just be like left on the street so they had teachers who were volunteering in the church actually um teaching kids every day they were feeding 3,000 people in their local community and the thing that stood out to me was when um they took us like around um there was a time when the pastor he just went off to the side and the translator said to us those are the warlords who control this area and normally 
you're not even allowed into these places without their permission. But they have so much respect for what the past in this community has done. Like the way that they, I was like, wow, that is a church making impact in their local community. Um, And I think for me, it just really like transformed and like, yeah, made me excited about what our churches could look like when, yes, we're faithful to God's word, but also we're so focused on like the community that we serve. Um, So I love like with my church, they are very focused on like the city that, you know, not even the city, the part of the city. So, you know, we're not trying to be like a, you know, a global brand. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not what our church is about. And I think for me, just church is such a great place where you meet and build relationships with people that are so different to you because I feel like often in today's world whether it's social media and only following people who are like you or have your interests or maybe where you live or your friendship group that church actually is such a rich place of diversity and I think yet yeah, just it's actually a privilege to serve I think so often even as someone who's experienced church it can feel like oh this is like another thing to add to my plate but when you see people's lives being transformed and impacted I just feel it's such a privilege that God gives us the opportunity to like use our gifts to be part of like you know, building the kingdom. I just feel, yeah, so excited. Um, But yeah, those are some of the things that I love about church, even though churches are complicated because we are all complicated. How about you in your like 35 years of being part, I think specifically being part of one church, because that's something that I find very interesting (laughs) as like a millennial. Um, How has that been? And what are some of, I guess your highlights have actually been part of a church, Mm. maybe more importantly, how you've also seen it helped you in your spiritual life? Yeah, so I think, I mean, it's very strange for someone of our age to be even in the same place all of that time. So I recognise how odd that is. But since I have, I do think it's given me a bit of a unique perspective and that in that, okay, for some of that time, I had to go. (laughs) I didn't have a choice, let's just be honest. But then as a teenager and coming into an adult, I've chosen to be part of that community. And I think there's something it ha- that has changed dramatically in that time, not only in things like style and even like theology and like, of course, like over that period of time. And I think some of those things have to develop and have to change as well. But to where we are now, some of the things that I've felt a huge benefit of and that have helped me personally, just as I've like found my own faith and began to live that as a, actually a big reason I think I even came to faith for myself is by observing people in the church forgive each other, honestly. Um, Yeah, because you see the bad. And I know for some people that just sends them the other way for me, like to see the bad and then to see forgiveness, even if not reconciliation on the back of it, has been such a powerful thing to me personally. So I think seeing the way people love each other, I think my parents have played a big part of that. So seeing them lead, not perfectly, seeing them change again and and like eventually kind of hand that over to the next leader. I think watching them go the distance with people, love people whether they are like them or not, love people whether they agree with them or not, that leaves an impression on you over a period of time. So it's such a core thing to me and I think I feel really strongly about being part of a local church where you can be because it's not of course there's a part where we give and we serve but I think we don't always realize what that actually gives to us and adds to us as well until we don't have it anymore and so I feel really privileged actually to to be able to be part of the same church for all the time. And it is completely imperfect. There have been some big problems, as you can imagine, just where you get any group of people together, whether they're of faith or not, there's going to be disappointment, pain and problems. So, yeah, but for me, it's just been seeing good, bad, ugly, but seeing God through the middle of that as the strand as well. I think for me, actually, as well, as a woman of faith in today's world, we talk about this as a team. Sometimes I literally feel like an alien (laughs) in today's world. And I think like just going to church and being part of that community, you know, whether you're new on your faith journey or you've been there for years, it just reminds you that like you're not alone in your faith. And I Mm. think like particularly in today's world, that's something that I've seen is just of like a huge benefit because, you know, in our industry, we cross over between like fashion and media, Mm. living in somewhere like London, 
being a millennial where every day you're bombarded with like only one percent of millennials or whatever are <laughs> just, you know still christians i think for me it's just been like a really amazing reminder every mm. sunday to be like yeah i'm not alone yeah and it's just easy to get sucked into normal we're, we're part of this culture and that's okay it's easy to get sucked into like different ways of thinking sometimes we just need like just realigning again a little bit and then sometimes that's from friends but sometimes that's from people of different generation and different background and yeah there's no there's no shame to be had in that like we all get distracted we all kind of get busy doing our own things and lose focus just on the bigger narrative and the bigger picture sometimes one thing I, I was going to say when you you asked me just about my own experience one thing that's really strong in our community I was thinking about it when you were saying about just your church also focusing on even just one specific area of London. Um, a big thing for us, and we always say it's for all people to find their way to God. So this isn't just about the very poor or the very rich or just these extremes of society. It's all people. And I think the diversity, not only in race and different like, like socioeconomic backgrounds, but schools of thought, the thought that that can actually work and come together and have unity is only really possible in the church, I think, now. Whether there's unity all the time is questionable, but, you know, it, more than what style of church you be, belong to and how big it is, whether it's actually, we're actually living the things that God's asked us to do together is, is the key. So, Ruth, what do you think are some important things when you're looking for a church as, a, as an adult to be mindful of? I think the first thing is that they are focused on, like, teaching and preaching from the bible um because yeah at the end of the day church is not just like a random community, <laughs> community <laughs> club um so i think that's really important like having a strong emphasis on teaching um i think for me personally it's also that a church that serves its local community because again going back to my experience in brazil i remember on the first day the pastor asking us in your local community if your church were just to be like taken out that day would the community notice that you guys had been there um, so yeah, I think a church that has a local community, I think maybe on a more practical level, and I know that like in big cities, people might disagree, but how we've spoken about the benefit, particularly if you're like fixed in one place. So this probably doesn't apply if you travel a lot with work, but at least church being somewhere where you know you can commit to going regularly. So what I mean is like, if there's a great church that's an hour and a half, you're probably not going to go on like yeah. a regular basis. Um, so yeah, I think for me, it's about finding somewhere that I can commit to going regularly, serving where I can is really important. How about you? Yeah. What other things would you say are key? I think there's a few things, but the, the big headline for me would be and I see this a lot and I try to discourage people from doing this is although like feeling like we fit somewhere and we can belong somewhere is very, very important. Not making that the king or the yeah. queen is, is important as well. And not just the style and how much we like the style. Like there's got to be, it's not to say that the style without substance, that's not true. But sometimes we go more off what our style is rather than do I actually align with this church's values? And like say, so the things that I believe are core to faith, are they actually doing that? And yeah, do I feel like I can belong here and fit here? Um, you know, is it just a holy huddle where we just meet every Sunday and nothing's changing, no one's growing? Well, that's up to you whether you want to stay or not. I'm probably going to be looking for somewhere else where I feel kind of challenged. I feel I can contribute and I feel that that's an important part of that journey. But yeah, the key for me would just be what are the values and do I align with them? And I think that takes time. Yeah. You can't know, know that on the You first can't. Thing. You can't know that. So I've loved this conversation, Ruth, and I feel a big takeaway for me is just around not allowing what's happened in the past to define what's happened moving forward. And there might need to be some healing and some forgiveness and even walking away in some cases, but it is possible to have good community and find a church where you really can belong and bring your best contribution and receive some good things as well. And I think, yeah, as we've said, like there's just such a blessing and benefit from being part of a local church community, particularly if you're at a stage in life where you want to grow in your faith. Um, I just think, yeah, church is a great place to do that. Even though it can be complex at times, I do think that church, which is God's idea, is such a beautiful place. Yeah. Thank you.